Hey y'all, and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian, and Wesley Hunt gives this unbelievable, never heard of before story of what Trump does behind the scenes with the Taliban. This story is just wild. When you are weak, and our adversaries know you're weak, they push you. It's no different than, a, than the bully in the schoolyard. If you're timid and a bully knows he can get away with it, what happens? He comes for your lunch money every single week. Yes. Every single day. Until you punch back. Until you punch back. We have been weak under Joe Biden. And so our adversaries around the globe, big and small, know that they can push us. Go ahead, Wesley, you go. You can talk. I'm going to give you my favorite, Trump, my, my favorite President Trump story. This is my number one favorite of all time. When we were negotiating with the Taliban, while President Trump was still the president, um, President Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but he wanted a conditions-based withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you do what we tell you to do, and then we will start pulling troops back slowly as long as you abide by our rules. It's President Trump Mike, and Mike Pompeo, and they are talking to Taliban leadership in the room, and they had one translator in the room. President Trump looked at the, at the Taliban leader and said this, I want to leave Afghanistan, but it's going to be a conditions-based withdrawal. And Translator translated. And he said, if you harm a, a hair on a single American, I'm going to kill you. And the translator goes, and Trump goes, tell Say him, yes. <laughs> <Translator>. yes. <laughs> tell him what I said. Tell him what I said. Reached in his pocket, pulled out a satellite photo of the leader, leader of, the, of the Taliban's home and handed it to him. Shut up. Got up and walked out the room. Sure did. Do you know for 18 months not a single American was killed in Afghanistan? Sure did. That's the definition of strength. That's what I'm talking about. And so you could imagine that kind of sentiment being around the world. If we have an embassy in another country, no one's going to touch it because they're going to be fearful that they'll get a Moab on their head. Mm -hmm. That's how President Trump rolls. This is the opposite of strength. This is the definition of weakness. And so now we're being feasted upon by other countries when our embassies are there because the Americans aren't going to do anything about it and they don't want us there anyway. But the point of us having an embassy there and the point of us having sovereign American soul is to be able to keep an eye on the world to a certain extent, to have that presence. But you can't have that presence when you have feckless leadership. Yo, this is wild. I actually can't believe Trump did this. Well, okay, I can, but I'm, I'm still just kind of shocked. Can you imagine Barack Obama doing something like that? Can you imagine Joe Biden doing something like that? George Bush? Well, the answer is no, you really can't. None of those men were as good in what I call boardroom politics. This is when you're behind the scenes, you're dealing with other legislators, other leaders. Trump is at his best during this kind of game. He knows what le leadership looks like in there. He knows what good negotiation is. It's literally the art of the deal. And he made the Taliban leader a deal that he could not refuse. And the moment Biden gets into office, he fumbles the withdrawal almost right out of the gate. It's just sickening to witness the difference between these two presidents. You had one man who looked the Taliban leader in the eye and hands him a photo of where the guy lives. That is some gangster level stuff right there. And man, that's, that's straight out of a mob movie. I mean, that's why they call him the Dawn, I guess. <laughs> Y'all, times are rough. Record inflation is still not under control. We have a president who doesn't know what planet he's on. And the Federal Reserve continues to make dumb decision after dumb decision after dumb decision. You can gamble on Wall Street all you want, but if you want to diversify and protect your wealth, you need to look into my friends over at Colonial Metals Group. These amazing experts understand how to keep your wealth safe and protected from the volatility of our current market. And there's even a great deal for first-time accounts. Free gold and silver-backed IRA accounts, insurance on whatever precious metals you happen to buy for five years, up to $7,500 worth of silver, and a nice safe for you to keep all this good stuff in. So go take a look at their website, link in the description below, or call the phone number below so you can talk personally to Paul Stone, CEO, and his amazing team of experts to protect your wealth today. But y'all, this means that Donald Trump is now the probably the third manliest president uh, in American history, with Andrew Jackson and Theodore Roosevelt beating him out. 
Uh, no, fourth. What, what, uh, fifth. Lincoln and uh, Washington would have to be on that list. Lincoln was 6'4", could th basically chop the tree down in one swing, and George Washington, 6'3", could crack a walnut between his fingers. Do you know how tough those shells are? So yeah, that, that makes him a top five, uh, just tough presidents. Man, ah, oh, and the best part about all of this, the very best part, isn't the fact that this is now a legendary move. It's the fact that it is the right move. This is how you project your power. This is how you get the world to behave. This is how, this is why Russia did nothing when Trump was in office. Remember, Russia invaded Georgia in 2008. It invaded Crimea in 2014 under, uh, under Obama. And he invaded again, full-blown invasion into Ukraine in just a few short years ago. And this was all predicated on poor leadership at the federal level that we could not get a basically restraining hold on the aggression that Russia has longed to project against its near abroad. Under Trump, Russia was silent because apparently uh, I, the reason I believe this story is because Trump probably did a similar thing to Putin. And Putin is a former KGB agent. The man's tough, but he was probably a little bit scared of Trump because he knew Trump's kind of crazy enough to do it. You know, there's something called mutually assured destruction. That's why nothing truly destructive happened uh, during the Soviet Union and United States Cold War. We almost came to blows because JFK was an idiot and put missiles in Turkey and then blew Cuba. Oh, well, the CIA was the one that boxed Cuba, but Kennedy could have done something about it and he refused. And then Russia was... Uh, retaliated to the nukes in Turkey and put them at America's doorstep. The reason why Cuba has been so important to the United States is that it lies uh, just south of the mouth of the Gulf of Mexico and the Mississippi River, the most important river system for transportation in the world. And it's an existential threat. 90 miles uh, to Florida, about 120 miles to Mexico. You can man maintain a blockade through there. And so, and I'm bringing this all back around to Trump, this is about power and trying to wield it and use it properly. We gave up a huge asset in Cuba and it nearly destroyed us, but it didn't. Because at the end of the day, Nikita Khrushchev and uh, John F. Kennedy fully understood how to work and negotiate with each other. That's not peace through strength, that's peace through good negotiation. This is peace through strength. Handing the picture of the location of the Taliban leader and said, I know where you live. Ah, that's just awesome. We need this back in the White House and badly need it back. We cannot allow weaker men like Joe Biden, who no longer even has the mental faculties to pull a move like this. Although Jill is a, Jill's nuts. I think she might, she might actually do something like that. But we didn't have that kind of leadership under Obama or Bush because they didn't know how to properly wield it. Again, this is boardroom politics. This is poker level, understanding your opponent levels of game. Donald Trump has that and has it in spades. This is a legendary moment. And it's a big reason why I've been such a fan of his foreign policy. He had so many wins out there. He renegotiated our trade deals. Uh, basically got China to stop being ridiculous. And he got NATO to start paying their fair share. Those were some of his biggest foreign policy goals, and he got every single one of them done. Right now, Trump is like James K. Polk. Four years, but he got a lot done during that. He achieved his main goals. One last one still eludes him. It's building the wall with Mexico. And that's a little bit harder when you have Congress in your way. But regardless of that, this is one of the greatest political stories I think I've ever heard. And it means that Trump is now a top five BA president. Man, this is awesome. Y'all, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed this segment here on Politibrawl. Catch y'all in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until then, y'all have a good one.